Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And today we have another review that we're looking forward to ever since the release of this keyboard last week. I know it's been a while since I announced that we received it, but I did want to really spend time with it and try it out before completing this review. So what we have here is the Razer Huntsman Mini which is a 60% mechanical keyboard with the optical purple clicky switches. Now I know that's not ideal for most of us. Anyway, some of us, we may like clicky switches, but that is the version that I have today. It is all black and the price for this was around $120. And that's the price for the white or black with the clicky switches and then the updated linear switches will be around $130, which is coming later, either this month or next month. This is a pretty decent keyboard, but we'll be going over all of the different specs, what to look for, how I really feel about it, and of course the sound test at the end, and we'll compare it to the old linears as well as Cherry MX Blues, which are clicky switches. A lot of people say that this isn't worth it, and I'll tell you what I think at the end, we have used the Ducky one too many and I'll be doing a review video of that eventually as well. But before we get started, I'd like to say that I honestly don't recommend that you buy this unless you love Razer or you love RGB because Razer just excels at RGB. All right, let's jump into the features and the review. So we always start with the back here at Switch and Click, of course. At the back, it looks pretty average. There is that glossy text right there that says created for gamers by gamers. And that just surrounds the entire back. We have our four rubber feet here. They're more like rubber squares, but they prevent the keyboard from moving pretty decently. I do use a desk mat on my table. So that also helps with the friction against friction really preventing any movement on a wooden desk though if you're not putting a lot of downward pressure onto the keyboard it does slide a little bit back when you're typing or you're getting into some pretty intense situations in games that is the target audience for this keyboard i don't play many games but when i do i don't really get into situations where i'm moving my keyboard but i'm just saying it does unless you're putting force down on it. We also have our two dual angle adjustable kickstands here. One is for six degrees, the other is for nine degrees. I don't really use the kickstands at all because I, I actually really like the natural angle that it's at. And I would say that's around three degrees. Honestly, it's really hard to measure it or estimate it without having a protractor or a measurement device of some sort. And then we have a cable hole right here for the USB-C connector. And I really like it because it does give you room to fit any custom cables. My Kraken one back there fits perfectly in here. So I believe that if you have a custom coiled USB-C cable, it will fit in here just fine. The USB connector itself though, is nothing to write home about. It is the same as the Razer Huntsman cable connector. It's a braided black connector with the two end caps at the end. One complaint I did have about the end caps is that once you take them out and connect it to your keyboard on your computer, it's really easy to lose those end caps and they're really not gonna be used ever again. So it would have been nice if they had some kind of little connector that keeps the end cap just connected to the wire itself. I know that doesn't look too aesthetic, but it's functional. And the cable itself fits very snugly into this hole because it has two cutouts on the side that are sort of grooves that the connector enters and stays there very, very snugly. All right, the packaging itself is very razor-esque. As you know, it's the razor green. It has the RGB in the cover. It's what you expect. It comes with the razor sticker, but I don't think this sticker is meant for the razor mini because it says razor chroma V2 on it. So maybe that's for the black widow chroma or something like that, or it's just their entire RGB lineup. But stickers are always cool. I don't really use them, but if you want to rep razor, that's there for you. And they have the manual. It's pretty thick. There's a lot of languages in there and it basically tells you the secondary functions and what you can do with them. 
Other than that, in the box, you just get the keyboard and the cable. So nothing else really, no keycap puller, no extra keycaps, nothing, nothing there. So, okay, on to the side. On the side, we do see that it has a floating keycap design, just like the Huntsman TE. I really don't like this because you do get to see dust accumulate here on that top plate pretty easily. However, one upside is that even if dust accumulates there easily, you can clean it out pretty easily as well with one of those rocket ship blower things and you just blow it in there and everything will come out. I really think that keyboards with bezels are a cleaner look and they really hold in the sound better. When you type on this, the sound just goes everywhere and anywhere. You can hear it from across the room, even in a very, very large room like your living room. You can also see that it has OEM profile keycaps. That's pretty common amongst pre-built big brands and really small brands as well. OEM is a very common profile keycap. This just means that it is a little bit higher than Cherry Profile, but you're probably used to this already. So not much to say there. Another thing about floating keycaps is that you do get to see the switches, which may be aesthetically pleasing, and you do get to see the RGB shine out through the RGB domes that we'll talk about later in this video. All right, so let's go to the overall build quality. From the side here, you can see that the thin aluminum plate here surrounding that board is super thin. And when you try to flex the keyboard, it does have some flex. The entirety of the keyboard other than that plate is made out of plastic. That means it's super lightweight. I put it on the scale. It weighs about 15.8 ounces or 450 grams. That's a little less than a pound for this entire keyboard. So that's very portable, but it's not super sturdy. Super lightweight, easy to fit in your bag or your backpack. However, due to the floating keycap design, it's, it's sort of easy to lodge out some of these keycaps just shaking in your bag without really trying. So that's the downside there. However, for most people, their keyboard will probably just be sitting on their desk. So you don't have to worry about lodging keycaps or the lightweightness or anything like that. And then let's go on to the keycaps. The keycaps are the same as the Razer PBT keycap upgrade set. It's also the same keycaps that are in the Razer Huntsman TE. They are double shot shine through PBT. They're pretty thick and they do feature a standard 60% layout. So you can change all these keycaps to a custom set like GMK or EPBT if you want to without really having to worry about a small key over here or a big key over there. So very easy there, no hassle at all. However, if you do that, you do lose some of the secondary legends in the side print. But I guess Razer thought about that a little bit because when you press FN, all the keys that have secondary functions light up in white and that allows you to know what keys have functions and what keys don't in the dark without having to read the side legends. Unfortunately, this doesn't illuminate the side printed legends. If you're gaming in the dark or if you're typing in the dark, you won't be able to see them. So make sure your most commonly used secondary functions are just right up here in your head. And the legends are very clean. I've said this before about the Razer Huntsman as well. And I own the pink quartz or quartz pink Razer PBT upgrade set, which I absolutely love. It's so thick and clean and there are so many different keycaps that just fit most standard layouts. So the one good thing about PBT is that it's generally rougher and it takes a little while to accumulate shine. By a little while, I mean a lot longer than an ABS plastic keycap. So that's pretty good there. As for the form factor, it is pretty much a standard 60% layout. This is literally just a Huntsman TE that you slashed out the function row and you slashed out the nav cluster and the arrow keys. And this is what you get. And you just combine it all into one thing. So if you really liked the Huntsman TE and thought it was too big or I don't use these keys enough, then yeah, this would be a really, really, really great option if you love that already. 
the RGB is really great. The only difference between this and the Huntsman TE is the size and the fact that this one stores some preset RGB lighting effects in it already. That's not just spectrum cycling like the TE. So the effects, we'll talk about those later and I'll show them to you. However, one downside that I see is that it takes a long time to cycle through all the effects. Every time you press FN, so you hold, you hold FN control and you press one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven. And each time you press it, it'll cycle through in a different color. But between each cycling, it goes back to the default white layer and then it shuts the RGB off and then it turns it back on. So it takes a little bit of like the keyboard brain to think, oh, I need to cycle through to another RGB color. Next, and pretty much the really important thing are the optical switches. We talked about the optical reds, at least version one in the Razer Huntsman, and those were very loud despite being like super smooth and linear switches. I like that Razer's innovating and coming up with new switches and trying something new, but I really don't like that these switches have their own stabilization bar. I think that's completely unnecessary and really adds to the loudness of the switches. Just if I'm shaking the keyboard or holding it right here, you can just hear it shaking. Each stabilizer bar is moving back and forth. <sighs> just don't like it. I just don't like it. So the optical purples, they actuate at 1.5 millimeter and 45 grams of force. Very lightweight, has an audible click, very clean click. Here's a sound preview. And then the optical reds are linear switches. They actuate at one millimeter and 40 grams of force. That was too lightweight, too fast for me. I had typos everywhere. If you're a gamer, it's probably a pretty good option. At the end, I'll also include a comparison sound between the purples and the MX blues. So stay tuned for that at the end. Or if you want to hear a separate Cherry MX blue video, I'll attach that right here so that you can check that out. One recommendation I have for you is do not, just do not bring this to the office or game in a room with other people or stream with it or record videos or anything with it because the loud, the switches are so loud that you'll be able to hear it on all of those platforms and your viewers are gonna complain. Trust me, it's happened to me before. They will complain. So the optical red v2 they inserted little sound dampeners on the side to reduce the sounds but the bars are still going to rattle when you hear a silent switch it usually comes with rubber sound dampeners at the bottom we have a silent red switch if you want to hear that really quickly i can provide a short sound demonstration this k6 right here now has stock gateron silent reds so this is what it sounds like As you can hear, there's that sort of sound dampened O-ring kind of sound, but it feels a lot better than O-rings. You also hear the spring, of course, because it is a stock switch, but compared to the other opticals, that's pretty quiet. Compared to this, that's really quiet. I still wouldn't even recommend you bring that to a library, to be honest. But anyways, back to the switches. Razer's done a whole lot of marketing on these switches. They are the fastest switch on the market, and that's because they actuate very lightly. Even if your finger's just resting on it, it'll actuate. And then they also actuate at a very short distance. So even a slightly small press will actuate. For gaming, this is probably good. You probably have to get used to it and know how hard to press or hold your fingers up to prevent accidentally pressing. On the clicky switches, it takes a little bit more force to actuate, so I actually don't have many typos with this one. And the click also provides a tactile and audible feedback during typing. Great for typing, terrible for listening. Get some noise canceling headphones when you're working or gaming with this keyboard. And optical switches are known to have less latency than mechanical switches, but personally, the difference is so small that it's negligible. I'm not a competitive gamer by any means. 
The stabilizers are just as bad as they were in the Huntsman TE. They're the same kind. They are not cherry style. There's not many things you can do to them. They sound pretty bad. Here's a preview. And then here's a regular switch. So clean clicks, but the stabilizer rattle is very, very, very loud. Everything about this keyboard is pretty loud. And then the RGB. It holds seven different effects of RGB. Unfortunately, you can't really store and edit your own RGB colors or effects. I've tried with Razer Synapse. It says it won't store it because it uses the Chroma Studio, which needs to be on for the RGBs to take effect. However, it can store macro profiles. If you're into that, you can store up to five profiles of different macro combinations. So if you're playing different games or playing different classes in the games, you can make macros for all of those, but not the RGB. So unfortunately, I don't really like having Razer Synapse open all the time. So I'm not really going to go for that route. It does have presets though. And to change it, you hold FN control and the numbers, like we've said, one is off. Two is a static color and it'll cycle between green, white, blue, red, orange, yellow, purple, and pink. And you can cycle through those colors for each effect afterwards. We have the breathing effect to the spectrum cycling effect, which is what you see on default on the Huntsman TE. We have the wave effect, the reactive effect, and the starlight effect. So pretty cool. I'm pretty happy that you can set it to a static white. One sort of okay thing about this keyboard is that although it says to be it, although Razer says it's only compatible with Windows 7, 10, 8, and all those, it actually does work on a Mac, although you can't really use any of the software or the Mac functions, but at least you can type on it, so that's pretty good. The secondary function, I really don't really, the secondary layers, I don't like the placement of some of these keys. Like the FN is on the right side, but the arrows are on IJ, KL, which means that you have to have pretty long fingers to be able to hold FN with your pinky finger and use the arrow keys with IJKL. Probably would have been better if it was on WASD or if you could remap caps to FN or something like that. There are keys that are unremappable on this keyboard and that's the FN key and the Windows key. So you can't move FN anywhere else, unfortunately. So that makes it really uncool. I like the placement of the delete, which is FN backspace. So there's some well thought out placements here as well as not so well thought out placements. I honestly feel they just copied another 60% keyboard that they thought did great on the market and was like, I like their layout. Let's go for it. All right. I think we pretty much talked about everything that we needed to. Let's jump into the sound test. We'll do the sound test with the Razer Huntsman Mini with purples first, then Cherry MX Blues, then a comparison with the original Razer Huntsman Red Opticals. So here we go.
All right, that was the sound test. As you can hear, the switches of the purples are pretty clean. However, the stabilizers really take away from the sound quality overall between the reds and the purples. On other keyboards, the Cherry MX Blues are pretty nice switches overall. And with better stabilizers, it can sound pretty decent and consistent and not too annoying, but I'm not a big fan of clicky switches anyways. So my conclusion on this keyboard is that I personally would not buy it. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't even buy the Razer Huntsman TE or the Mini. And the reason for that is because of its optical switches, which are very loud. Although they're innovative and react very fast and all that jazz, the stabilizers really take away from me. You can't really customize them. You can't really mod them to make them sound better. You're pretty much stuck with what you have. And for this price, there are other keyboards out there that I would go for instead, and that would probably be the Leopold FC660M or the Ducky 1-2 Mini. There is a Ducky Mecha Mini, but I don't like the floating keycaps over there. So Ducky 1-2 Mini or even a hot swappable board like the K6, I would... Honestly, I wouldn't go for a 60% because that's me. I would go for a 65% if you're spending this much amount of money, you can do better. That's how I feel about the keyboard. We do have a list of 65% keyboards that we absolutely love and recommend. And I'll link that down below into our blog post. We have 10 of them. And then of course you have the option to make your own custom keyboard. But anyways, we'll have a comparison video against the Ducky 1-2 Mini coming pretty soon. And then if you're not following my Instagram already, I make announcements about things like what we're reviewing or what shipments we're getting in the mail or like what review samples we're getting soon. Like we're getting the Durgod Fusion pretty soon. So if you're not following us already, be sure to do that or you're gonna miss some of these cool announcements. And then be a little blindsided when they come out on the YouTube channel. I hope you make really smart decisions when it comes to buying your keyboards. Don't do it just because of the branding and the hype and everyone says so. Make your own decisions. However, I'm not responsible for any of your financial decisions. That choice is on you. Be sure to watch a video that we think you'll really like here and then our mechanical keyboard ASMR playlist here with a lot of switches that sound better than this one. So be sure to check that out and subscribe here if you want to. I'll see you in the next one.